Hello, and welcome to Gemiums vs Zombies. This is a challenge I have created for Plants vs Zombies 2 that limits me to using only plants bought directly with gems. To start this challenge, I'm going to exit to the main menu as soon as I can so that I can buy all of the Gemium plants. Don't ask how I got all the gems, we don't want EA to know. You'll notice I have a few gems left over, you'll see why a little bit later. Let's kick this off by going over my rules, then we can get into it. I can only use Gemium plants. These are plants that are bought directly with gems from the shop or from the almanac. I'm not allowed to use any power-ups, level up plants, or buy plant food. I'm allowed to skip levels that pick some or all of my plants. I'm not allowed to interact with pre-planted plants. For example, I can't use plant food on a plant that is already on the field. I'm allowed to use the Zen garden, but only in the most extreme circumstances. I will avoid it to my greatest extent. For levels with a sun production requirement, I'm allowed to plant one sunflower. And lastly, I'm allowed to introduce or modify rules mid-challenge. Real quick before we start, I'd just like to ask that you show your support and feedback for the video. It really helps me out. Now let's get into it. None of the modern day tutorial levels are possible because I am not allowed to choose my own plants. By day one of ancient Egypt, I'm allowed to choose my own plants. So I go ahead and favor all of my gemiums and select my loadout. I'm still learning in these early levels, so you won't see much of a strategy until later levels. Day two pre-picks all of my plants, but that's not an issue this time because we have respawning lawnmowers. So I'm able to just wait the level out and wait for lawnmowers to kill all the zombies. Day three lets me pick all of my own plants. Although it's not very difficult, this is kind of where I learn what strategy I like to use. I really like using electric current. It's very efficient because I only have to spend 300 sun to take care of all five lanes at once. Day four is a possible conveyor belt level because of respawning lawnmowers. Day five is a possible completely pre-picked plants level because of respawning lawnmowers. And day six is a conveyor belt level without respawning lawnmowers, so I'm not able to complete it. On day seven, I adopt the strategy of putting peanuts in front of my electric currents so that they don't get eaten. Day seven also unlocks the almanac, which means we can go use those extra 300 gems on ghost pepper, sweet potato, and sapling. Two of those plants are some of the most useful plants in this challenge. This is because, as you can see, in day 8, I am able to use saplings to slow down the zombies and collect more sun, and sweet potatoes are able to drag the zombies into the electric current fields in order to damage and kill them. On day 9, I accidentally brought iceberg lettuce because it was pre-picked for me in the previous level, and I just used the button that repicks all the plants that you had from the previous level. I didn't realize that iceberg lettuce was still in my arsenal. The level is fairly easy, and this is the first level where I really double down on my strategy of electric currents, sweet potatoes, and saplings. Day 10 throws a lot of zombies at me, but overall it's not too awfully difficult. You can see that I solidify my strategy of electric currents, sweet potatoes, and saplings. Day 11 pre-picks all of my plants, so we do a basic strategy of pea shooters only. It works out just fine, the level's very easy. On day 12, I like to experiment with the Hypnosherm a little bit. Unfortunately, it seems to me like it's a little bit too expensive for this challenge, and not really worth it to use in any of the levels that I play. We'll see if there's any utility that comes up with it that's relevant in the future, however. Day 13 is a mold colony level. It's fairly easy because our strategy generally doesn't rely on planting in the back row anyway. We like to have our electric currents a little bit far forward and a couple sweet potatoes, and we can push it forward just one more tile so we can fit some saplings in in the furthest back row when we have enough sun. However, I decided to just go easy and not use any saplings for the level because I really didn't need them. The electric current and sweet potato strategy works really well for this world, just by itself. Day 14 is pretty easy. We of course use the stream strategy as usual and the level doesn't really give us any major problems. Day 15 is a protect the endangered plants level. It's of course very easy. We just push our electric current strategy strategy up one tile, and we have a bunch of extra sun from the sunflowers. Zero issues with this level. Day 16, I decided I wanted to explore how powerful the homing thistle is. Without an active sun production, homing thistle doesn't seem to be very viable. Zombies get too close, and its lack of area control means it's not very easily able to protect itself. On day 17, we aren't allowed to have more than 14 plants at a time. This won't even be close to a problem for us because we can probably clear the level with just four. Two electric currents and two sweet potatoes. Day 18 is the last stand level that gives us 2200 sun to beat the level. I found this way too easy, so I went ahead and replayed the level, but only allowed myself 750 sun instead. I think I could even do it with just 600. Two electric currents, two sweet potatoes, and two saplings is all we needed to really beat this level. And boy oh boy does this level send a lot of zombies at the end, but that of course is not a problem for us. 
On day 19, Dave planted some mold colonies, and we can't have more than 16 plants at a time. This level was fairly easy, although the torchlight zombies are a little bit of a problem for me. They burn my sweet potatoes instantly, so I have to use instant plants, such as squash or hurricane, in order to stall them or kill them immediately. Day 20 is another protect the endangered plants level. This one's pretty easy because it gives us a bunch of sunflowers to deal with. This level is where I learned that blowing out a torchlight zombie's torch with something like a hurricane can be reignited by fire pea shooters. This could be a problem for me, but fortunately because torchlight zombies have a faster movement speed than regular zombies, them being slowed down by my sapflings sap means that the torchlight zombie is always in front and it usually gets pummeled by the fire pea shooter first, and so I don't have to worry about its torch getting relit. Day 21 picks half of my plants for me. I went ahead and went with electric current, sweet potato, and hurricane. Hurricane's just to deal with the torchlight zombies so that they don't burn my sweet potatoes. This level was pretty easy. I didn't even have to plant much other than my usual strategy. Just a couple hurricanes and I was able to make it through the level. Day 22 has more mold colonies and a planting limit of 18. This level wasn't too difficult at all. I did a little bit of experimenting with how to kill the first zombies of the stage so that I can save up a bit more sun to get my electric currents down. Sometimes the zombies come a little too quick in the top or bottom lanes and I'm not able to set up my electric current and sweet potatoes quickly enough to protect the electric current. This level was pretty easy overall and we'll move on to day 23. Day 23 is a gargantuan level. It wasn't too difficult because of the power of the fire pea shooters plant food and because of Squash's ability to just about instant kill a Gargantuar. We passed the level pretty easy, making sure to plant her kills for the Torchlight Zombies. Day 24 is another last stand level. It gives us 2,450 sun to start the level. Unlike the last time when I played one of these, where I replayed with less sun, I didn't feel like that was as possible with this because of the Torchlight Zombies. I have to use a hurricane for each one, or else I can end up losing my sweet potatoes. So I went ahead and planted Fire Pea Shooters and Sapflings all over just to make sure that the torchlight zombies don't give me any real issues. And that's pretty much it for this challenge. Of course I have Dr. Zombus to fight, but because it's a conveyor belt level, they don't give us any GMMs. I did go ahead and beat it with only leafy greens, and I even did it my first try this time. I had lots of fun with this challenge, and I can't wait to see you guys back for Pirate Seas, hopefully next week, but we'll see when that comes. If you haven't seen my leafy greens series, be sure to check that out. It's another fun challenge that I created, where we play the game with only leafy greens. Anywho, thanks so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.